Good morning and welcome to Bowmansdale Church of God. Good morning. This morning we have a, a great celebration. We're going to install our new pastor. And it's also All Saints Sunday. So I thought I would read a, a little um, portion of a devotional about All Saints Sunday. Some Christian traditions focus on remembering special Christians on All Saints Day or bringing to mind believers who have died and gone to be with the Lord. This day offers a fine opportunity to thank God for those who, whose lives have honored him and made a difference to us. Yet it's important to remember that the biblical sense of saint includes all of God's people in Ephesians, the very first chapter, the first verse, in the opening of this passage, Paul addresses the letter's recipient as God's holy people. So saints are holy people by definition. But what does it mean to be a holy person, a saint? From a biblical perspective, something is holy when it is set apart for God and God's purposes. In Exodus 19, God set apart the Israelites as his own treasured possession. They would be a holy nation through which God would make himself known to the world. In the New Testament, believers in Jesus Christ are referred to as saints or holy people because they have inherited Israel's divinely conferred status as people set apart by God for him and for his saving purposes. If you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, you are a saint. You are a holy person. This does not necessarily say anything about your worthiness to receive this title or your exemplary lifestyle. However, you are a saint because God has chosen you to belong to him and his people. He has set you apart so that you might participate in his redeeming work in the world. Remember, you are not a solo saint. There is no such thing from a biblical perspective. Rather, as a saint, you have been joined to the family of all saints, including those who live around the world and those who have gone to be with the Lord. Therefore, on All Saints Day, it is a perfect time to remember that God has made you special for him and his purposes, and that he has joined you into the eternal, worldwide fellowship of all saints. Moreover, it's a good day to take seriously the fact that God wants to make himself known in this world through you a member of the family of all saints. So good morning, saints. Good morning. We're all saints. But it is an honor and a privilege to be here this morning for this installation service, to have been part of the search team and to be a part with you and to see how God moves to bring this day to fruition. And now for this opportunity to just install Pastor Bob as your pastor of the services in your bulletin and at appropriate times you'll be asked to respond and so it's there so it is a joy to be here and so to you pastor bob beloved in christ you have been called to a holy calling and a sacred ministry your presence here is a witness to your readiness and willingness to take upon yourself the holy office of ministry in the church and to faithfully carry out these duties and responsibilities which belong to the work of a good minister of Jesus Christ. So I have a few questions for you and ask you to respond appropriately. Are you willing to take upon you the office of the pastor of this congregation? By the help of God, I am. Do you promise, to the best of your ability, to proclaim to all, young and old, the counsel of God unto salvation according to the gospel of Jesus Christ? I do, with God's help. Do you promise to lead an exemplary life and to avoid anything that might hinder the fruitfulness of your office and work? I promise, with the help of God. 
And now to the congregation, beloved of the Lord. You have expressed your, your desire and willingness before proper authorities to have Robert Huber as your pastor. You have heard the solemn promises made by him. Do you now receive him as your pastor? By the help of God, we will. Do you promise to show him the love, honor, and obedience do a pastor and guide placed over you in the Lord? We do promise with the help of God. Will you, according to the grace given you, labor with him and adequately support him in his ministry? With the help of God, we will. With these great expressions of mutual support and faithfulness made by pastor and people, and by the authority of the Eastern Regional Conference Churches of God, I now install Robert Huber as the pastor of the Bowmansdale Church of God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The Lord who has called you to this service, enlighten you, strengthen you, and guide you through the Holy Spirit that you may serve the congregation as a faithful laborer bringing fruit unto eternal life. May I pray for you? Please, please. God Almighty, we are grateful that you are present, that you call, that you work within us to bring about life, life that is whole, a life that is complete, a life that is found only, truly, in Jesus Christ. We come before you bowing because Jesus is Lord and Savior of Bob, and he has shown evidence of his willingness to follow you for Sherry, for her life, for his children and grandchildren. Lord, may you watch over them and strengthen them and be united together as we serve you here at Bowmansdale. May we truly, as a congregation, work together in unity and strength. For the glory of Jesus, for the glory of God, for the glory of the Holy Spirit who works in us and calls us. May fruit be born for your kingdom today and forevermore. May we have strength to understand what is going on even though we don't understand what is going on. Because you are working in us. We praise you, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our King who reigns forever. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And you got an actual certificate? Ooh, actual. Okay, it's official now. And you even signed it. Yep, Thank you. Legit. Oh, that's yeah. okay. It's cool. Been signed been. and everything. Yeah. That's good. It's a pen, not pencil, so. Huh? <coughs> that's true. It is. Oh, it is in pen. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And at this time, the, the women's ministries has a special presentation they want to give. Can I give this to the person so it doesn't get lost or anything happen to it? I will hand it to my wife. There you go. I hand it to her so I know where it's at so it's taken care of. <clears throat> oh, my. All the goodies. My goodness. Excuse me. I'm going to put a cough drop in my mouth so I don't. Should I come right down here? Or? The women's ministries have put together for your family a welcome basket. Awesome. It is goods from all of, well, lots of the local mm -hmm. uh, establishments, and there are uh, takeout brochures in there for you, and all kinds of goodies. We want to welcome you, well, thank you and very much. your family to our church. This, oops, this particular basket. I know who that's for. I see the candy. That's <laughs> for the girls. Look at that. Wow, thank you very much. I will put this right down here in his pew and no snack until after service. But anyway, we can all join. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Wow, that's so nice. Thank you. Thank you, babe. Thank you. Hugs. Yeah, just kind of an interesting time. You just like to give hugs, not just high fives in the Lord kind of thing out there. Thank you very much, uh, Dave. Thank you. Uh, now, last week there was children's chat, and they say this week I get to do it again. So who all's out there going to come on up here for children's chat? 
Mm, I got one. I got two. I got three. Look at that. Now they run, they're running up here. They're just like excited. They have no idea what's going to happen up here, but they run up here. Hopefully I don't let you down, guys. You're the grinning crew, aren't you? Yeah. All right. All right. I'm catching on. I'm learning. So, so, so evidently you guys like racing. Do you? I mean racing, running races. Do you run against each other to see who can go and who's the fastest and all that kind? I actually just fast walk. You just fast walk. Okay, that's all right. I don't care if they beat me or not. You, <laughs> did you hear that? Which is why I was next to the side that we always go out on. And they even go out on that side the first time. So I was the first one out here. So he's the first one out. Strategic. I'm not going to be the fastest, but I'm going to get out first. So. That's going to preach. That works. He's, I don't care if they beat me. I just walk real fast. So that's good. But the Bible talks, I'm going to talk about today uh, about, the, uh, about running races and about getting a prize. The Bible talks about, and Paul's going to talk about, about the people trying to get a prize. Not everybody gets first place, do they? No. But I want to give you something. I'm going to give you this, this little token thing. Each one of you get one. Uh, and you didn't have to do anything to it, huh? To keep it? To keep it? And we'll give it back at the end of the service. No, just kidding. You keep it. Yeah, you keep it. That's yours. To, to think about the prize that God talks about in the Bible is the prize of eternal life with him. But we're going to run our race all our life. Your life started right. You're running a race. No, I did. You are. You're in a race. You're in the race to the finish. And you're going to grow up, and you guys are going to be important for God because you're important to God Amen. so there's purpose and plan in your life and so you're starting and you, you hold on to that and see how long you can hold on to it whenever I, a couple years from now I might ask you hey do you remember that and you go uh I don't know but anyway you might say hey I got it but that is a reminder that's, that's John 3.16 on there it has to remind us of what God did so that he can equip us to do what he calls us to do Okay? Now, in the race, I got to tell you this. In our lives, things might not work out exactly the way we want them to. It might not. But you know what? God's word says you stay faithful to him, he stays faithful to you. And the prize that we're going for, that that thing talks about with John 3.16, is bigger than anything that we have to look forward to. And that's eternity, and that's a life with, with God forever. But until we get there, he says that he will help us in that race. No matter how, what happens, that he is always with us. That we're to run to look to him. And that's what my challenge is for you, to continue to look into God. I know you're going to look to your church family here to help you, but to keep you going. Okay? okay. We're going to do that. Okay? God, you can give me a fist bump. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, what? Hey, bump. There you go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for what you tell, what your word says. And uh, you bless these young men and those, the, the young folks that aren't here today, Lord God. Uh, I just pray a blessing upon them as well that they hear this maybe online and they can uh, grab a hold of it to know that you're with us all through life. And uh, you want us to, to run the race of character and purpose in life aiming towards you because we have an eternal reward. Uh, and in the midst of it, you're always with us. And we thank you for that promise. And may we remember it and trust in each other. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Zoom. Our God does reign. That's why part of our worship is a time of prayer. To pray for one another, and our mission focus today is Kenya. Again, uh, many churches, we have several churches that we support in Kenya, a lot of native ministry there, Kenyans ministering to Kenyans. Um, and you might not be able to find a lot of information on some of Kenya because of, uh, it's in a, sometimes it's a hostile area uh, because of different religions fighting among each other. Uh, and so 
uh, sometimes the Muslim religion is against Christians and things like that. And, it, and yet they, we still have brothers and sisters ministering there in the name of Jesus in harm's way. So we can't necessarily put addresses and names out, but we know that our Heavenly Father knows and that we intercede for them. And so I'm going to ask you to, to pray for Kenya this week. Um, and, and this morning we're going to do that for our brothers and sisters there. And as we... Uh, move on into uh, the message today. Um, we're going to be going to 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 9. So if you've got your Bible with you, we're going to go there. 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 9, or you've got your tablet with you, whatever you use, your phone, uh, different things that uh, and online. Again, they're watching us uh, get that Bible out off the coffee table. You know that one that's sitting over there? Pull that baby out. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And uh, follow along. And as you get there, would you please stand with me as we read God's Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly, I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And this word that was applied and written to the church in Corinth and the, the early church, this same word applies to the church in Bowmansdale the church of America, the church of the world. Lord God, that this is the word for us to today, for today, for our lives, that we may run this race, attaining to the prize that you have for each one of us. Speak to our hearts today, Lord God. Guide us and lead us. And we just thank you, Father, for what you are going to do and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Whoops. Praise the Lord. At least it was the word God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Good. Read the whole chapter, I guess. So, anyway, that happens. Technology is great, ain't it? When it works, we can flip through it. When it don't, uh oh. But all's well. As you already know, you know, this presidential race that's, that's up and running, running, get it? Um, it's going on that the race, right? We have the race for the Oval Office. You know, Tuesday is going to be, maybe we'll know who wins. But the understanding of this race and this running is to, to look at, you know, only one person is going to win the presidency. The other person will talk about we ran a good race, you know, all these other things, and, you know, and, and presidency, Kong, all these different races, or only one person wins that seat. And it's interesting that, that the political realm and the political races are that. I mean, I'm using the word race, the races. They are, you know, the term, every candidate was always, you know, they're moving all over the place trying to, to win, and we hear these terminologies like the, 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 the one, whoever's out in front will be, you know, they call them, you know, they're the front runner. Or they're out in front, or the one running the race, you know, it's, it's a one horse race, you know, and they're lapping the field kind of thing. And if it's a close race, well, what do they say? It's like it's neck and neck. Or the, the election's going down to the wire. 
you know, we're coming around the corner, they're coming around the, you know, coming down the, the home stretch kind of thing. And so there's all kind of analogies and words for this presidential, these races. And, but we know of all different kind of races, right? I mean, there's, you know, we think of, you know, of, of land swimming in the race and, and doing those kind of things. And, but Paul was looking here and reminding us, even though, before I get to that, but we all understand that sometimes races aren't always what they turn out to be. Uh, sometimes in the political races, you get the one who wins is not always, and this is not a slam, I'm just, this just happens, right? I mean, sometimes you get elections, and it, it might be a school board, and you get that one person, you elect them, and it might not be the right person. Like, ah, it didn't work out too good. But anyway, you have candidates who run on the populist platform. They get sidetracked or even corrupted by the powerful pool of a system that wants them to remain the status quo. It's a race whenever the winner sometimes turns out to be a loser. But anyway, Paul tells us, and is gonna, we look at the scripture this morning, that it's possible to run a good race. Whether we're running for the presidency or a more attainable prize. Paul's found, he's fond of these racing and, and competition metaphors when talking about the Christian life. And his metaphors, can, they teach us that whether you're going to be a candidate or a common person, there's some primary lessons about running the race of life with integrity, passion, and purpose. So if you're right in the inter if you're on the back page here and you want to write the outline down, those are the three points for this morning. The first thing we need to do is we need to run to win. I know he's like, well, no kidding, right? I mean, who wants to be, you know, first loser, right? I mean, that's second place. But anyway, that's what we call it. But anyway. But because it does seem obvious in polls, but winning wasn't about the achievement of a status or the shape of one's office. Instead, Paul understood the ultimate goal of the race of his life was pleasing God and living in relationship with God. Paul gave an account of his own conduct here in, in, in chapter 9, if you want to read that, the discipline of and telling us his readers, that his choices and actions are not geared toward achieving personal pleasure or status, but about pleasing God in such a way that in the end, he would not be disqualified. So winning, in other words, meant achieving the kind of character and conduct that reflected the crucified the crucified and resurrected Jesus Christ. Having won that prize, or at least striving to win it, he talks about in Philippians, he's striving toward that prize through words and deeds of his life. We watch these presidential candidates vying for, you know, we've seen the debates, these old, they throw out the, all these statistics and these different things, and are they right, are they wrong? Do, Sometimes we wondered what's going on in our political realm, no matter who it is, is does character really count? Not everyone will win the presidency, just like the runners competing won't win the same prize. But just as I told the crew that was up here this morning, you might not win first place. You might not win that big prize, but Paul's talking about here, y'all going to have a prize. Everybody gets a chance to get a prize. Different prizes. And these prizes matter more than others. Because titles and offices and prestige are all perishable prizes. Paul invites everyone from a governmental candidate to a regular people to work at winning the prize that is imperishable. A life that reflects the image, character, and purposes of God. In the end, this is the only prize that really matters. 
So how do you win the prize that Paul is talking about? I'm glad you asked that question this morning. Because that leads us to point number two, which is self-control. Because it's not really much different than winning the competition prize. It takes work. We've got to work at it. Athletes exercise self-control in all things. And Paul talks about it. Runners and boxers, they have to train digi diligently. That's the word I wrote down there. In order to have the ability to reach the finish line. Self-control involves denying one's things, uh, attitudes and indulgences that could potentially keep a person from running completely to the finish line. Runners, they get out of bed when they don't feel like getting out of bed, right? They're going to run. I see some people run. I know their heart's in it because I see them run. It's raining. It's cold outside. And they're out there running. And they, you notice runners, they always have a smile on their face, right? They're out there running. They, it's like, that don't look like a lot of fun, you know? But they're into it. You're into it. And that's okay. But you're, you're sacrificing. That's your passion. That's where you're at. And you're completing that. That, that's self-control. Controlling your body, controlling yourself. Boxers. I mean, they don't, you know, they don't have the, the candy and, and lay off the sweets and all those things because they got to maintain weight. They got to keep their energy. They have, you know, there's certain things that they have to do. <coughs> and he, Paul then goes to, we're going to go over to Galatians 5. Because uh, he talks about self-control as a fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, in my Bible, the title is talking about freedom in Christ. But living by the Spirit, and uh, I'm just going to share this real quick. And if I go a little late today, um, y'all are excited because I know y'all got an extra hour's worth of sleep. So you're like really revved up and just like, yeah, go, go, go. Just kidding. It'd just be a little bit. But anyway, just that precursor. They just got installed today. Now watch out. You know, it's like, oh, no. We could uninstall you just as quick. But anyway, um, Pastor Dave's here, so he knows. So anyway, so <laughs> uh, Galatians 5, starting in verse 16, it says, So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature so here's a control issue sinful nature spiritual nature in Christ out of Christ there's some of the self control you're not under the law see the acts of the sinful nature are obvious sexual immorality impurity and debauchery idolatry and witchcraft uh, speaking of Halloween but anyway um, selfish ambitions dissensions factions Envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, so he's already talked about this, right? That those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Bummer. But God's word never stops at that, see? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Self-control. Want to win the race of life in the, by the gospel of Jesus Christ, we need self-control. We need to... to, to Put, again, Paul, other places, Scripture talks about um, crucifying the flesh, those desires that we used to run by, because those are the things, I might be jumping ahead, but I'm going to go ahead. Those are the things that disqualify you, and it's not an eternal disqualification sometimes. What it is is the disqualification of your character, of your witness for Christ. 
Paul's saying, I am doing these things to, because he's in the midst. Now, if you go to Sunday school, this is my commercial, real quick for Sunday school. Sunday school is talking about Corinthians, and they learned about their lifestyle. And their lifestyle in Corinth was just a, a mess. They had all these, these uh, idol worshipers, and, and they had these, these uh, yeah, and through the midst of their worship is, is gluttony and, and sexual issues and all kind of just perversion and stuff like that. And that's what they were part of, and that was to be somebody, to be a part of that worship. And, and Paul is saying, no, that's not godly at all. You need to change. You need to stay away from that stuff. And if you stay away from the old life and start this new life, people will see something different in your life, self-control, godly behavior, and bam, that race you're won, you're not disqualified because your life meets your talk. You had to deal with that. You think it's bad now. You should... And you guys should come to Sunday school and check them video. That's good stuff. Talk to Jamin and, and, and Doug and them guys, and they were teaching that stuff. So I missed this Sunday, so I missed this morning because I was down learning about Bonesdale Church of God stuff. So anyway, to, uh, but anyway, you can talk to me about that later. But self-control, because how many boxers, if they go in the ring and they shadow box all that time and you don't lay a glove on the other guy, what's going to happen? Then you're not going to last long, right? You got to, you got to fight back. You got to, you got to run that. You got to fight for that. And so once you get there, the idea is you are fighting for the Lord and, and you need to, to know these things. And so not only win the, run the win, but also self-control through the Holy Spirit, because that helps you do the last ver The last thing is live with purpose. Live with a purpose. See, we see a lot of times if we use the presidential candidacies, they start out with these idealisms about what they want to accomplish. And, and then they realistically set, and often, hey, I got these ideas, I want to do this. And what happens? They get in there and they got to compromise. And instead, a lot happens, we see they start doing things to get reelected instead of doing the things that they wanted to do. See, when your primary focus becomes pleasing those who elected you, it can be fairly easy to do what's pragmatic rather than purposeful. Paul, again, he taps in his competition thing. and he, you know, the, We don't do it aimlessly. We got goals. We got direction. We want what God's want to do. It's interesting that uh, to think about an intended target Listening to the cheering crowds and their opinions, both positive and negative, can lead to atrophy. Football coach Buddy Ryan, I don't know if many of you ever heard of him, he had a fond saying, he says, if you listen to the fans, you'll be sitting with them. All right, listen to them, what they're going to say, you know, Monday morning quarterback, you start listening to the fans instead of the coach and, and the direction uh, living with purpose, what's your purpose? To be on the field playing the game. And again, instead of pleasing the constituents, Paul was always more interested in pleasing God. God has gifted and equipped each of us with a particular mission within the body of Christ for the purpose of transforming the world as agents of God's kingdom. So do we recognize this purpose? Because followers of Christ, we need to recognize that Jesus had laser focus. Paul had laser focus. Jesus received a cross because he didn't please the right people. Paul would be thrown into prison. If you read his epistles, he'd been thrown in prison many times, abused, beaten, Nothing could dissuade either of these guys from the life and living their purpose in life, following Jesus. May we be able to say the same thing. While we're watching in these candidates, and if you've already voted, praise God. If you didn't vote, vote.
but our race is to please God. That's what makes us all winners. Seeking after God. His will and direction in our lives. So we want to run to win the race heavenward, but in the midst of getting, before we get there, there's some things we got to do. And that's be ambassadors, imitators, uh, all those describing words of who we are in Christ Jesus. And Paul says to run the race, that you're going to have to put some things first before you if he's going to be first. If we're going to witness to people about Jesus, are we learning about him on our own of who he is so we can tell others? And it's not always the studying. It's going to come out to be the living. The living out of you being that Bible that someone else sees. That you live it out. Here at the Bowmansdale Church of God, we've been doing communion uh, every week. Uh, and again, it's, it's not a mandatory thing. It's around things as you choose wish to. Uh, and it is a... It's something not to take lightly. First thing is you need to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you do, that's all that the requirement is to partake in communion with, with us as, as the body of Christ. We, you don't got to be a member of the Bowmansdale Church of God family. You need to be a member of God's family. And, and this, these are their symbols. So if you're at home and you don't have one of these nifty little wafer and cup things and Maybe you've already gone to, you, you're, you've been tuning in on a regular basis and you know that, oh, it's time, I'm going to go get my, or you already have your juice and your, your bread or your you know, cracker or something, and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know they're taking communion. Well, as I talk here, you can go and get something. Go and get a cracker and a, and a, and a juice. or uh, These are symbols. So it doesn't have to be juice all the time. It doesn't have to be a wafer or bread. It's the symbolization and understanding of what we are doing and remembering what Jesus has done so that we may have salvation. So I want us to take a little bit of time and ask God to examine our hearts because that's what the scripture says. We examine ourselves. I want you to, we can join in. We're all in this together. and We just bow our heads and say, Holy Spirit, Search me, you know me. You know in my very innermost parts. And I don't want to partake in the ordinance of, of communion without getting a clean slate, asking you to forgive me. Because I don't want to eat, drink, judgment upon myself. I want to be right with you, Father. So I ask right now for forgiveness. And I want to pray a prayer right now. If you're out there and, and you, you don't know Jesus or, or you need to come back, I want you to pray with me. I'll, let's, let's pray right now asking Jesus to be your Savior. And it, it's, it's simple. It's just, God, I need Jesus today. I realize that. I pray and ask Jesus to be my Savior. Help me to believe and understand about him dying for my sin. And believing and knowing that he rose from the grave on the third day. Holy Spirit, change my heart. Fill me to overflowing with your presence. Change the desires of my heart. Lead me into a Bible-believing church. And may my life change from today on as I learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you need to tell somebody. Uh, and I, I'd love you to, if you've done that and you're online, that you would send us an email or even a letter. Uh, the address, everything's on the, on the, on the TV there uh, or tablet, whatever you're watching on. Because we want you to get in tune with, with God now and get, 
get your life turned around and God wants to do many things in your life. So um, let us know. And you're here to let somebody know. So we remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he had his supper with his disciples. And does every, before I do this, does, I'm sorry, does everybody have one of these that wants one? I shouldn't start this unless, and you don't have to take, because maybe today you're like, well, I'm not taking it. I've taken it last week, and that's, that's okay. But on that night, Jesus took bread, and he broke it, and he gave thanks. Let's give thanks. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this reminder of really what happened, that we may have salvation, that your body was broken on the cross so that we could have forgiveness, so that you handled every pain that we could ever go through. We can trust in you for it, for the help. But we thank you today for that reminder because we need it to put us back on track and thinking about all that you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, take and eat this, all of it, in remembrance of me. So take and eat. Also on that night, Jesus took a cup and he gave thanks. Let's give thanks. Heavenly Father, again, we are need to be thankful people. We're needy people. And we need you. We need reminded of the ultimate sacrifice of the lifeblood of Jesus Christ. It was poured out for the sins of many. So that that ultimate sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice for all mankind was offered up through your son stepping out of heaven, coming down to give his life so that we may have life, so that we may run this race called life with to win for you, to be self-controlled in the purpose that you have for each one of us. We give you thanks for this reminder. We may proclaim it in the days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said that this is my blood poured out for you, the new covenant. Take and drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. We remember him. And also we remember that he is coming back. Amen. Amen. Um, there is an announcement as we rejoice uh, that next week is annual congregational meeting following service. So those members signed up to be members, uh, we'd like you to stick around, make plans next week to show up and because uh, there's some voting things going on and just to be a part of the church as you are possible. Um, and uh, also, um, the Lord, we just thank him for what he's doing. The, the, the grocery cart, that's, as you walk in here uh, for New Hope Ministries, um, as you bring things for it, put them in there. Um, but also I want to challenge the folks that are online uh, that haven't been at church, and you're like, man, I'd really just, you can stop by when the office is open, just bring stuff in and put it in the cart. It's very COVID free and uh, protective. So um, that's an opportunity for you that are out there to come on by, drop your goodies in the cart, and we can get that over to New Hope Ministries and provide for them as needed. So with those things happening, Lord, we are so grateful that you give us so many things, so many opportunities to bless others to bless you. That, Lord, again, it's about pleasing you, not others. But, Lord, in the midst of it, we do please each other because we're about you. The unity in Christ Jesus and the purpose of your kingdom here on earth to grow it. Now we go with another leg of the race to run. What's ahead of us this week? You've already planned it out. May we be faithful in walking in it. That you'll give us the strength, you'll give us the courage, you'll give us one another the, to the fellowship to be about your will 
to continue seeking your prize to give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.